hey, there's no TRS anymore, so I thought I'd use my blog as an opportunity to get my review of The Hobbit out into the world. I am going to be on Attack of the Show on Thursday, December the 13th, which is tomorrow if you're watching this now. Uh, but I thought I'd use my blog to talk about The Hobbit. I loved it. I loved it. I had heard some negative going in uh, to the screening and was very worried that this was not going to carry on the tradition of uh, Lord of the Rings. But I think it does everything Lord of the Rings does and does it better. It's bigger. It's grander. It's more impressive. It does uh, the impossible, which is it, it tells the less impactful story. You know, you have Lord of the Rings, which is the end of the world, chaos, the, the, all the stakes with the Lord of the Rings. Hobbit is a much smaller tale, at least in the book. It, it tells that story, but does it, and it makes it feel just as grand, just as majestic, just as big and impactful as the Lord of the Rings story. It's, it's quite something. I saw it in 48 frames per second in 3D, and I have to recommend that to everybody. Yes, there are some moments of uh, kind of jankiness, odd, almost looks like video, especially at the beginning. But I think The Hobbit benefits from the thing that Avatar benefited from and will benefit from, I think, in Avatar 2 and 3, which will be in 48 frames per second, which is that there, is very, there are very few moments when we are not seeing something that is fantastic and something that is, that is altered by some special effect, be it makeup, physical makeup, or a digital effect. There are very few moments when there's not something changed on the screen. And I think since you're already in a fantastical world, you're already in uh, something that doesn't look like reality, I think the 48 frames doesn't ever, it very rarely yanked me out of that experience and made me feel like it wasn't filmic. It definitely did feel more like I was looking through a window out into a world rather than seeing a film of a world. And I think for the people that really love the filmic qualities of, of cinema, that may be a step back and it may in, in effect feel more like video, more like something that's cinema verite. And it sounds strange talking about that with um, such a, a fantastical world, but those two things marry together. So I feel like I'm looking through a window into something that once existed or only existed in my imagination and now I'm peering into the reality of it. I loved it, I loved the 3D. I would recommend seeing it in 48 frames to anybody. Uh, from a story perspective, I think it surpasses Lord of the Rings simply because Bilbo is such a more accessible character and Martin Freeman delivers a, a spectacular performance. It's so nuanced and funny and genuine and real and we are with him from the word go. He brings such a humanity to it even though he's not playing a human, uh, that I found myself much more drawn into the story right away. Uh, Frodo, re really uh, Samwise was the heart of the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, uh, but we get all that heart in our main character this time. We don't have to have his sidekick be the heart. We have uh, F uh, Bilbo being the character that I associated with the most, and he, he's so charming and so easy uh, to to relate to, and you, you get that reluctant hero thing with him. His performance is great. It is a difficult magic trick to pull off uh, a, a film with 14 main characters, and to a large extent, this first Hobbit movie fails in that. Uh, the Hobbits are, m for the most part, a big clump of, excuse me, not Hobbits, the dwarves, uh, are, for the most part, a huge clump of dwarves, um, they're not distinct. They're distinct in their look, which is to be applauded and not easy to pull off to make dwarves all stand out visually. But the, for the most part, personality-wise, you get very little distinction between them, and there's so many of them that they just sort of all run around as a clump. But that's okay because uh, they work as just one character in and of themselves. It's this, this chorus of, of dwarves. And the action beats and how much has been infused from the other books and the old lore of, of Tolkien uh, really makes for an incredibly wild experience. It is, it is a roller coaster ride, the likes of which the Lord of the Rings series has not been up to this point. I feel like this surpasses Lord of the Rings trilogy for visual spectacle, uh, 
roller coaster ride thrills and chills and dynamic kinetic action sequences. Uh, I think it's a testament to how far the technology has come since the last Lord of the Rings, the last 10 years of, of digital technology. There are some absolutely stunning visual moments. It is, Peter Jackson is working on a, an incredible level. I mean, there's this, I don't even want to spoil anything, the, the scale of, of what, he, what he takes a very, you know, small children's book and amps up the scale and brings in all this ancillary material uh, into an, an incredible, I just had such a blast watching it. It's three hours and I didn't want it to end, just like the, the other Lord of the Rings movies. So, don't listen to the haters. I loved loving this movie. It is, uh, I'm, I want to go see it again. I had a great time. Um, I don't understand people that say the first hour is slow. I love, it's very true to the book. I love meeting all those characters, seeing the backstory of, of uh, you know, the dwarf battles. It, it is so intense and awesome and, and cool. I loved it. I Loved it. So, hit me up with some comments and let me know what you thought of Lord of the Rings when you get to see it. Or excuse me, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. And uh, I'll see you next time.